allows me to do is access my weapon. I can initiate this just to access a tool. If, uh, if you're a police officer or you're outside, uh, if you're a corrections officer and you're out on a transport, you have a gun. But if you're inside a facility as a corrections officer, you may have your OC, you may have a taser, a uh, baton, depending on where you work, what you do. So this allows you to create that space to access that weapon. Where if I just try to access it with him at close range here, we have equal access. He can take it from me. Okay. So the frame looks like this. What I'm doing is I'm going to ballistically strike him with my forearm, the center of my forearm. This is not a shove. It may look a bit like a shove because I'm not going to hit my partner full power here. Um, but when we do it full contact, we're going to hit hard. I'm going to try to aim for about the center of the chest. Okay. I don't want to go below the nipple line because if I hit low, he'll buck forward on me. Okay. Now that may be fine if you want to set that up for something, but to create space, I want to hit his upper body so I make his shoulders go back, which will uh, make his center of gravity go back and move away from me. It's particularly good if somebody is square to you. They get up in your face and they're square and they're like this. They really go for a ride because they don't have any structure to stop uh, that, that force going that direction. So from you know, whatever position I happen to be in, maybe I'm talking here, um, I'm in this position, some natural hand position, right from here I can strike and drive through, okay? And I'm gonna explode into that. It'll actually look like this, boom, in and out, okay? Um, you gotta say boom too or it doesn't work, <laughs> all right? So as I'm talking to the person, they've got my space, he comes in, I slam him back, and now I'm able to access, okay? Now that's one application of the frame. Uh, there are many. This thing works as a really good, powerful block to be used to pull with, uh, to, to uh, move a body basically. But uh, as a core technique for weapons accessing, that's a very good one. Okay, we're going to take a quick look at some principles of gun disarming, uh, specifically the initial deflection. So, um, a lot of people do a lot of different things with this, and they can all work, depending on the situation, but um, I like things to be as, as simple as possible and something I'm going to be able to remember, especially for our officers. If we're, we're teaching them and they only train it once or twice a year, uh, some less than that, they're not going to remember a, complex fancy disarm. The other issue with those fast quick uh, fancy disarms, uh, you know, what if the guy's got a little 25 or something that's small that you don't have a lot of leverage on the actual gun? Um, you know, now you're, where are you at with that? So we want something that will kind of work across the broadest spectrum possible that's going to be a simple formula to remember rather than a set technique, okay? So some of the things we like to look at for our initial disarm, or I'm sorry, initial deflection and draw out there. Um, if he's pointing the gun at me, you know, I need to be able to deal with somebody that has a two-handed grip, okay? A lot of these are done with one-handed and you can do this quick, fast, switch it around, shoot him in under a second, and that's fine. If you want to train that, by all means, go ahead. But that's going to be hard to be teaching our officers and to, for them to remember. And again, you got a little 25, that's going to be a lot harder to do, okay? Um, and then he puts two hands on, he's got a good grip, Again, we're looking at uh, you know better leverage here that, that it's going to be a little bit more difficult to immediately take that gun. Now, some people like to grab initially, okay? Um, I don't have a problem with that, but I don't prefer it. I prefer a slap for my initial deflection, okay? And the reason is, one, I see people uh, telegraphing, okay? And you can do that with the slap too, and it's possible to telegraph. But with the grab, their hand starts to go a little bit. That might freak him out get him to pull the gun back, and that's what we're trying to avoid. We want to build his confidence. He's made this mistake of getting close. We want to encourage that. Um, the other issue is you can't grab from all angles. If he's back here, okay, there isn't a grab. Now we're back to initial deflection. So I like to stick with that principle of initial deflection because I can do it from a variety of different positions, okay? For the most part, there's always exceptions, but the other issue, if he aims in again, is from doing this with airsoft guns, um, you know, there's been times, even moving as fast as I can, getting this off the line, 
where I've got my other arm shot with that pellet. It doesn't feel very good, okay? It would feel a whole lot worse if I had a live gun there. So, you know, when we're deflecting here, when we're slapping, we can go ahead and slap it hard and really get it off the line to get, to get ourselves out of the way quickly, okay? And then we'll, we'll go after it after that. Um, so that's why I prefer uh, that initial deflection being a, a hard slap or redirect rather than a, a grab, okay? And remember, as you're doing that, you're going to be moving the target as well. So we split the difference here. I want to go non-telegraphically from wherever I'm at, okay? So if my hand's over here, it wouldn't make sense for me to come over here. My hand will go this way, okay? I'm moving the target at the same time I move the gun from whatever position I happen to be in. If I can get that contact up, I can move here. I'm working that same initial deflection. So that's the first step of our formula that allows us to apply the other steps. After that, we're going to get a hold of the, the weapon bearing limb and we're going to attack the person. Um, if the gun is easy to disarm along that way, if you can get a hold of it, by all means, you can do the leverage based disarm. But our first priority is attacking the person holding that gun. Because again, if they have a, a little uh, short barreled weapon, there isn't near as much leverage as there would be on a, a large gun like this. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that brief overview of some of our programs and techniques. Um, you know, I trust these techniques to uh, protect my family, to get me home to my family every night, and I believe uh, they'll work for you as well. So if you're interested, I think they'll also integrate into what you're already doing um, seamlessly without a whole lot of changes. Um, but it, obviously we couldn't cover everything on a brief video here. So if you're interested in uh, further courses, integrating this into your agencies, if you're in law enforcement, or um, you know, even for a private citizen, we have a lot of programs available. Uh, if you're interested in seminars, courses, etc., videos, please contact us at wartaxsystems.com. And uh, thanks for your time.